day could end the same way that it started, cold and slick. Right now it looks like a big blob of blue, but it means snow. A new system with snow is moving through central Indiana. And it couldn't have come on a more appropriate evening. Bob Gregory's final day of full-time weather casting here at Channel 13. Live from the heart of central Indiana, this is Channel 13 Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Good evening. I'm Ann Ryder. And I'm John Stair. Here we go again. Another winter weather system moving through central Indiana. We're going to begin our Snow Team 13 coverage now. Chris Wright is watching the road conditions with our traffic cams all across the city. Jeremy Rogowski is live out in the middle of it. But first, we go to Bob Gregory with the latest forecast. Bob? Boy, I guess since I'm inside, seniority does have its privileges, doesn't it? <laughs> Take a look at the precip now. What our radar is showing here, some light precipitation up to the north, where this is probably coming down. The rest of it is very, very light throughout the area, and it's going to continue to be that way throughout uh, the evening hours. We're accumulating one to maybe three inches of snow for us in the metro area. But take a look. What does this mean? Well, for the Indianapolis metropolitan area, we're looking at two to three inches of snow, one to two farther south. But in this area, they have a snow advisory out where accumulations may run anywhere from three to as much as five inches of, road, of uh, snow. And on top of these roads, which some of them were already snowpacked, you put down this fresh snow, even a little sleep mixed in with it, travel is indeed very, very hazardous, so allow yourself plenty of extra time. We'll talk about the forecast through the rest of the week for you coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, the weather could not come at a worse time. Right now, rush hour is winding down. Eyewitness News reporter Jeremy Rogowski is looking out over I-65 right now. Jeremy? Well, John and Ann, at this hour, the good news is not too many accidents to speak of around town, but the bad news as we look at I-65, live pictures between the north and south splits, that's the bad news. Traffic moving safely but slowly. Stop and go northbound on I-65. As you can see, as we pan over to the southbound lanes, just in the last 10 minutes or so, traffic picking up a little bit. Again, everybody pretty much handling this safely but be sure you can count on some extra minutes to your drive time home. A couple of spots around town we need, need to mention. 7400 block of Michigan Road, disabled vehicle causing some delays there. 70 eastbound, east of post, a slide off uh, in that area and at Holton, Washington, erect. 75 salt trucks out tonight, 80 after 11 o'clock to make sure your morning drive isn't slipping and sliding when we do this all over again on the rush hour drive to work. Live on I-65, Jeremy Rogowski, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. It's a mess out there. Thanks, Jeremy. And we have more Snow Team 13 coverage right now. Chris Wright is outside our studios with the latest from there. Chris? Yeah, John and Ann, the snow is coming down. Luckily, today the temperature got up to the 20s, and that allowed the chemicals to work to really clear things away. But as you can see over my shoulder, traffic is slow due to the fresh coating of snow we have on the ground right now, and it's going to continue to be that way throughout the evening. Now let's take a look at some other locations across central Indiana. The main shopping district will head on up north to Keystone at the crossing. You see traffic there moving rather slowly, rather congested in that area. And over by the airport as well, we've got quite a bit of traffic as folks are making their way back and forth. So far, we haven't had any major stalls on the roadway, so things are moving rather slowly, but at this point, they are moving. That could change as we're expecting the snow to, to accumulate tonight. As Bob mentioned, here in the city, we'll see two to three inches with a heavier band of snow to the north. Bob will have the complete forecast coming up. John and Ann, back to you. All right. Thank you, Chris. Well, the weather is raising tempers and draining checkbooks. Eyewitness News reporter Chris Prophet now on how the snow and cold have caught people by surprise and how they're paying dearly for it. The main roads are clean, but the weekend weather has left too many people in the cold. We've got a two and a half year old and a three month old. My wife got up to nurse the uh, three month old and came back to bed and let me know that uh, it was about 50 degrees in the house. Broken furnaces and 18 hour days for repairman Mike Patterson. Yeah, I just finished replacing the gas valve, the brand new gas valve. <laughs> With furnaces working hard to heat a home, many are showing their age or a lack of maintenance. Dirty air filters are one problem, though most common though. Yeah, a lot of them don't get them checked or serviced the way they should. Like the homes engine, cars are also breaking down in the weather. What's as soon as they get back in? Drained batteries, frozen fuel lines, and slick roads have filled the service bays at repair shops. We do have people that are sliding into curbs, so we have um, broken wheels, some front end damage, um, batteries. The problems are part mechanical, part human nature. For a car to run year-round, it needs maintenance, and too many people neglect their cars, say mechanics until they don't run. The cars that are coming in on the hooks right now, on the tow trucks, of which we've had maybe 10 today, if they were in Florida, they'd still be running. But the first cold snap, bam. Like a faulty furnace, 
Misfiring machines making winter feel a lot colder. We're live at the salt barn, and uh, as you heard, over 80 trucks are going to be out tonight salting and plowing, and Paul Whitmore is with the Department of Public Works. Is this going to be a little e easier to clean compared to the snow that we have to, over the weekend? We hope it's going to be a lot easier to clean. The temperatures are going to be a little higher, which means the salt is going to work. The wind isn't going to be nearly as strong as it was over the weekend, so it's not going to be constantly blowing the snow back on the streets we've already cleared. And the plan is to get the main arteries first? The plan is to get the main arteries, work on those primary streets, and then we can move from there to the secondary streets and then into some residential areas tomorrow morning once we take care of the morning rush hour. Okay, good luck. Thanks okay. a lot, Paul. Thanks. All right, and we're reporting live at the Saltborn downtown. Chris Proffitt, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And if you're traveling outside of central Indiana, Indiana State Police have set up a road condition hotline, 1-800-261-7623 or locally, 655-5691. You can also log on to our website, WTHR.com, click on Hot Topics. You'll find road conditions there, airport delays, any cancellations, and of course, the latest school delays and closings. After an election that ended up taking weeks, Indiana's 12 electors took just minutes today to cast all of their votes for George W. Bush. Eyewitness News political reporter Kevin Rader was among a crowd of people who witnessed history at the State House. Eight men and four women were true to their country and their state today, reflecting the wishes of our Constitution in a packed House chamber. And on the 18th day of December of 2000, the presidential electors of Indiana cast 12 votes for George W. Bush for President of the United States. First in line. I hope we're first. We we're first on the board elect tonight. Yeah. Might as well be first on the board today. And if Secretary of State Sue Ann Gilroy has her way, first in election law reform. We must reform what is necessary to reform, including our outdated voting mechanisms and procedures that put the integrity of our electoral process at risk. But that's what led to the field trips, the pictures, and yes, even the autographs. There you go. Thanks for coming Thank today. Daniel. What'd you think of the ceremony? Was that pretty cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't forget to vote when you're old enough to vote. Yeah. Okay? I won't. All right. That's the real message emanating from the Indiana State House, but there also was a noticeable sigh of relief. I, I, the result never was in question, but when uh, Sue Ann Gilroy announced that George W. Bush was the winner, it was uh, it was quite a relief. Happy to be finished with it. Then the electors captured the historic moment with a photo. It's the ninth time in the last 36 years Indiana's electors have voted Republican, but it's the first time it truly made a difference. Kevin Rader, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. And the president-elect George W. Bush is in Washington, D.C. tonight. It's his first visit to the nation's capital since the election. It was a jam-packed day. He first met with Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan. His next stop was Capitol Hill, where he dropped in on the power brokers there. And then there was another Kodak moment in Washington today. The first lady-to-be, Laura Bush, had tea with the current first lady, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Tomorrow, Mr. Bush will meet with Vice President Al Gore and also President Clinton. Well, next at 6 o'clock, the Colts keep alive their playoff hopes. And a moment you won't want to miss. The man of the hour, Bob Gregory, will say his final goodbyes to you and to all of his weather fans. First, the Channel 13 viewers sending Bob some well wishes. Okay. Bob, I think you did a great job throughout the years. Even though you brought us a bad blizzard in 78, I forgive you for it. Have a good retirement and wish you the best of luck. Bob, thanks for bringing us the weather over the past few years. It's been great. It's wonderful again today. Good luck. Hey, Bob, I really appreciate all the stuff you have done for us. You've been great on TV, good with the weather, and very laid back. Thanks a lot, Bob. Now get Hardy's Famous Roast Beef Sandwich for an incredibly low 89 cents. Oven roasted and freshly sliced, always tender and juicy, just 89 cents. Or try Hardy's new Big Cheeseburger, also 89 cents. The big news at Hardee's is our new tender steak sandwiches. Delicious Philly tender steak or deluxe tender steak. We slice the steak thin so it's super tender and juicy. Try a little tenderness with new tender steak sandwiches, Philly or deluxe, only at Hardee's. It's the season to remind you that some of the world's finest automotive technology comes wrapped in beautiful, glistening packages. And that now your Cadillac dealer can make them just as attractive to drive. Drop in for the season's best from Cadillac, the fusion of design and technology.
Now, Ann Ryder, John Stair, Bob Gregory's Skytrack Forecast, and Sports with Dave Calabro. This is Channel 13 Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Wow, 6.10 and time for sports? It's a little yeah, different tonight. Right. You get the wow. feeling you're not the star today. Why, what's up with that, huh? <laughs> Let's save a little more room for Bob at the end. Well, that's a good thing. He can it's have all the time thing. he needs tonight. This is his day. Good evening to you. Just about everyone, including me, thought the Colts were finished, but they found a way to keep those playoff hopes alive until the final regular season game of the year. Now, down in Miami, they have the weather worth bragging about, but their team isn't worth a darn these days. The Colts' offense finally came together during a road game. Peyton Manning, nearly a flawless game. First, he hit Marcus Pollard, 50-yard strike. And then, did you see this? Manning showed his running ability, scrambling for a touchdown, diving. Colts built a 17-3 lead, and the defense did the rest. A couple of sacks and a late Jeff Burris interception. It sealed the victory, 20-13. So the Colts will host Minnesota Christmas Eve, another must-win game. Their defense is solid. I mean, their defense is, uh, you know, teams have scored some points on them, but, but they've earned them. You know, they've moved the ball, they've run the ball well against them and, and thrown the ball. So it'll be important for our offense. Um, uh, we can help our defense out by scoring some points and maybe keeping their offense off the field. Now the Colts are not dead yet. See, they can all actually win the AFC East. they got to beat Minnesota, and the Jets and Miami both have to lose. They can win a wild card. The Colts must beat Minnesota. The Jets lose to, at Baltimore or New England beats Miami. So the Colts pretty much have to win and get some help along the way. Tickets for a potential home playoff game go on sale tomorrow. You can buy them beginning at 10 a.m. at the RCA Dome ticket office and at all Ticketmaster outlets. The Colts are limiting sales to 10 tickets per transaction, so we'll keep an eye on that. Well, the Colts are winning, but the Pacers are losing. Indiana has dropped two in a row, and they play four games the next five nights starting tomorrow in Chicago. The guys spent today on the practice court looking to turn this thing around. The Pacers have fallen to 11 and 13. The losing streak doesn't concern Reggie Miller right now because he says he's losing his weatherman. Well, probably the best weatherman in the game. You know, I've been here 13 years. And coming from California, Bob, you've been a big help to me turning on the news, especially come winter time. But it was kind of tough to get through all the laughing and the giggles sometimes, but I'm surely going to miss that. I'm going to miss all that laughing through the weather. Have a happy retirement, and God bless you. I think no, Mr. Right. Bob's attention over there. I saw him look up. It's the first time he's watched sports in weeks. First time he's ever watched sports since I've been here. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, he's laughing. What a night for Bob to retire. Lots of snow and cold, and uh, he's going to make that his final forecast coming up in just a minute. First, more well wishes to Bob. But all the times he's laughed on TV while he's doing the weather, it's just he's made it fun. Bye, Bob. My husband and I were just talking about Bob Gre Gregory and how we used to watch the commercials with the children were all bundled up real tight when he was predicting the weather, and we we'll really miss him and have a happy retirement. Goodbye. Happy retirement. Get the gift you really want at the Lexus December to Remember sales event. See your Lexus dealer. When you're looking for value and people who care, come see us at Kroger. We'll always be there. Count on the people. Count on the price. Right now, with your Kroger Plus card, Cook's Shank Portion Ham is just 99 cents a pound. 24 packs of Coke are $3.99. And Kroger Large or Extra Large Eggs are 59 cents a dozen. Count on us. My pleasure, happy campers. Washington apples, just the thing. Available at Marsh. Christmas is a time for giving and loving. We're doing a project called Adopt a Family. It's really fun when you bring in the money because you get to count it. It's like, will we have that much? One of the best parts for me is going to shop at Walmart. Walmart is really cool. It has like almost everything. We buy tons of presents. It's nice to know um, they're doing something for a child that probably never had a nice Christmas. Giving is one of the best things that you could do. I like it. 
When I make people be happy, it feels great. Well, Bob, congratulations. Good luck on your retirement. I hope uh, life holds every happiness for you that you hope it holds for you. <laughs> I remember years ago when we were working together there at the station, and your friendship then, as it is now, was uh, very important to me. So good luck to you. For them, yeah, oh, that's, that's very great. nice. Well, very before nice. we get into your weather forecast, a correction. Mm -hmm. Go figure. <laughs> Road before my forecast. I, now, no, that's right before. I haven't even given it, and they're correcting. <laughs> <laughs> Road conditions. Please don't call that number we gave you just a minute ago. I won't this tell you. This is the right one. That's here. the right oh. one. One eight hundred two six California. <laughs> that's right. Sunny and eighty out there. Well, let's talk a little weather here. We've got uh, some uh, precip in the form of some snow on our radar for you right now. Even though we may be at a dry pocket what our uh, radar is indicating here but some uh, heavier or more significant snow I guess let's put it that way uh, will be moving toward the area there is one patch up to the north uh, uh, near the Tipton area and then also out here uh, in the west Park County all of this is coming toward the east for us so more moisture for the overnight take a close-up view now of our future track forecasting model here's what that looks like beginning at midnight you see plenty of snow in the area it'll let up for a while tomorrow morning and then the snow comes back in by noontime we'll look at still more snow in the area then it really sets up kind of a lake effect for us Tuesday night on into Wednesday. Thus, it'll start to move up. But then, right out here to the west, we have yet another storm, which is coming our way to, again, bring more snow. But these are not too bad since they're clipper systems coming from the northwest. 20 and 2, the high-low range for Indianapolis today. We're at that 20 mark now, reporting flurries at the airport. Have a wind chill of minus 3. Barometer continues to fall. The storm center is located near Cincinnati in the morning as that churns away. Of course, that lake effect will set up, so snow and clouds will continue. High pressure moves in. That's the insurance marker for very, very cold air to continue to be over us. Then yet another clipper will come our way during the day on Wednesday, and then that will bring another opportunity opportunity for snow, but fortunately when they take this track, we're not looking at one foot snows, more in the category of a few inches. So for us, snow advisory north of our area, in the metro area, something in the neighborhood of 1 to 3 this evening, 16 by 11 o'clock, overnight a 2 to 3 inch accumulation, morning low comes in about 12 degrees, 8 o'clock in the morning, then still some snow around only 12 for a high, and then in the afternoon, 19 degrees, but with that northwest wind 10 to 20 miles an hour, you're looking at wind chills well below zero. Here's the rest of the week for you now and we can see we'll take uh, have some cloudy days on Wednesday by the time we hit Thursday, we've got some more snow in the forecast for us. And then by the time we hit uh, Saturday, then we'll have partly sunny skies, cold low of 2, and then we'll end up with uh, 20 in the afternoon. So, so, so here we are. You know, the, last, the last couple of weeks when you've come back to the desk here, we've always been able to surprise you with uh, people that you're surprised to see. And look who we have with us yes. today. Hey, Mayor. it's not Dave Calabro. Uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mayor. You're doing a poor Dave Calabro imitation. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good to All see right. you, Bart. Terrific. Nice to see you. Well, Bob, you have been the Channel 13 weathercaster for my entire life. I take it back. Two thirds. <laughs> two thirds of my life. And through all that time when we even though we know that you couldn't actually control the weather uh, you made us feel as if you cared about the weather's impact on us and so for that i just want to present you this on behalf of all the citizens of indianapolis i want to proclaim this day to be bob gregory day in the city of indianapolis and wish you well in your retirement and say god bless mm -hmm. you on behalf of all the people of this great city thank you thank, thank you, you very much and we wish you good night mm. oh, that's That's really special. Thank you. I, I appreciate that very Thank much. You. Um, if I could take a moment right now, I, I, um, I guess I hope that uh, some of you have really had some fun and you've enjoyed the memories that we have for, well shared with you here the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's really been great. I don't think anything like this has ever been done uh, before uh, anywhere that I can think of. Uh, but, you know, you think about television, where else could it happen? where television would celebrate someone that, uh, who is, well, never 100% correct, interrupts your favorite TV uh, program with weather messages, gets laughing so much that he can't finish the forecast. Television, right. 
WTHR, absolutely. This is without a doubt the greatest job in the world. Defining success is when opportunity and talent meet. This has been it. I thank John Wolfe for his ownership of this great company. Rich Pegram, our general manager, for creating and supporting these opportunities. And I especially want to thank you for inviting me into your living room to, to talk about weather, to talk about how smart high school students are, to meet kids from Riley Hospital, to meet kids sharing coats. It would be great to continue all of this except for time. Only God provides time. That's why after 43 years of broadcasting, I have decided that now is the time to move to the next phase of life. Now there will be time for Barbara and me to travel, expand my food experience, <laughs> time for my sons, my grandchildren, time to read, fish, play tennis, and golf. So if you hear someone out there yelling, four, Look out, it could be me. <laughs> You've made me, my wife Barbara, and my family uh, extremely proud. Thank you. I, that's all I, I, I can't say any more than thank you. I'm deeply touched by everything Beautiful. that's happened, not only today, but for 28 years. It's uh, Beautiful. been amazing. Well, let me tell you something. I've been in broadcasting for 25 years, and I can say truly that I have never met a person in my experience in broadcasting like you. You're the perfect combination of professionalism, of brains, of humility, and empathy. And I, I think back to a, a poem that's kind of a kid's poem written by Rudyard Kipling, If. And there's a line in there that I think describes you perfectly. And I wrote it down here. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch. And I've seen you over these past years with people from all walks of life. And you treat everybody with the dignity and respect that they deserve. And you know, relationships really are a two-way street, and I think you're somebody that really recognizes that. And people haven't watched you all those years because they like you. I think it's because they know that you like them, too. And the past couple of weeks, as all these tributes have come in, I've had the chance to sit right here and see the tears welling up in your eyes, you know. And, and I know that you care just like they care about you. And when I look back on my career, this is going to be a highlight the time that I had with you, and I'm going to miss you being around here every yeah, day. Yeah, really me too. Thank you. You know, Thank you. you and I have talked before with all of our technology, and we have so much now in television, it comes down to the people. It really does, and it comes down to, oh, I promised I wouldn't do this, to making the connection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one crying. What's wrong with that thing? But you, you are like sunshine walking into the room. You really are. You have that kind of warmth, and you make bad weather easier to take, and you make bad news easier to take. And I'm so glad you're my neighbor, <laughs> and this is not goodbye, no. but you've been a trusted colleague, a friend, and I know that I speak for the viewers of, of Central Indiana, thanking you for all that you've done, all that you've done. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. We love well. you. Okay, Dave. <laughs> you get the last word. Oh, uh, just congratulations. I know there are a lot of farm ponds and golf courses in Central Indiana that are in trouble because of Bob Gregory <laughs> no on the loose. And it has been a pleasure. You, it's so fun working with you, and you've set a standard for me and many other people, so have fun in retirement. Okay. Thank you. Now we you've got a, those yeah. nights with your family. Yeah, that you nice. wanted you so much and they now, wanted. Right? Take a little adjustment. I've set my watch to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we have a video tribute of mm -hmm. Bob's 28 years here. We'd like you to take a look at this now with Bob and uh, enjoy the time that he has spent here at Channel 13. There are places I... Some forever, not for better, and some have gone, and some remain. All these places have their moments with lovers and friends. I still. Well, it's one of these jobs you carry with you, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's
But in my life, I loved you One of the true measures of a man is to take a look at his at his friends and family. And Barb's lovely wife, Barb, is here. His son, Rob, and grandson. It's uh, it's quite a night, and so many people came out to, to be here with Bob on this night. The other son is here too, but he's busy working right now. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven, that one, Barb. This has got to feel great. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to getting snowed in with Bob. <laughs> We've got a little party plan. Okay, a big party plan tonight. But this has got to feel a little bit surreal, doesn't yeah, it? You're it, too it, young for this. It does. It does. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not really. But <laughs> you just but anyway, that way. Hey, thank you all. Happy New Year and happy Merry Christmas and whatever. Everybody have good health in 2000. Thanks. Good Thanks, deal. everybody, for Thank coming you. down here. Okay? Thank Appreciate you. it. Thanks, good deal. Thank Thanks. You. Your love.